Ladies and gentlemen, can I please have your attention? I've just been handed an urgent and horrifying news story. And I need all of you to stop what you're doing and listen. Cannonball! Sentry mode activated. Target acquired. Hey there Hunters and welcome back to the Gunners Guild. Diving back into the world of Remnant here, the next DLC, Subject 2923, is going to be available on Thursday, and ahead of the DLC launch, we got a patch that changed around all the equipments, like seriously all of them. So I wanted to take this time and again talk about new sets and loadouts to use before the DLC drops and during while you try to get all that new DLC loot. First off, you should know that the Dupree DLC patch did add a lot of items you can currently grab in our worlds, so don't forget to grab those. They include a few new amulets and a bunch of rings. I'll put the locations in the description. Also, I do want to preface this by saying that build diversity has just shot through the roof. It's fucking insane. These sets are a good foundation, but if you seriously want to min-max to the extreme, you're going to have to do so in a case-by-case -case scenario for bosses and locations anyway, so that's going to be more up to you. Also, I had done a previous vid covering sets to use, and those, for the most part, are still going to hold up just fine even with the current changes, so I'm not really going to be revisiting those. You can check them out in the description. Instead, I'm going to actually have a new set here. And so here are some more templates to get started with for ideas. The first one is kind of a big meme as you can see. This is the Juggernaut setup. This new patch gave a Ring of the Unclean one a fat bonus to belly flop damage. On top of that, Leto's armor got entirely reworked. No longer does it give that damage bonus passive, instead it gives stamina reduction, stagger resistance, and damage reduction based on missing HP up to 50%, which is fucking insane. To pair with these, I also grabbed the new ring Restriction Cord, which will limit your HP to 50% and reduce the damage you take by 15%. This instantly gives us our 50% damage reduction on Leto's, and to top it all off, we're going to be using Vengeance Idol, which will grant us a flat 30% bonus damage to everything, including our flops. So we're going to have a bunch of damage resistance and a bunch of damage just from this little interaction here. The weapons aren't too important here. I'm using Hive Cannon since it also got a nice buff that allows it to apply corrosion on hit, which is fantastic. So I'll be using that to apply the defense down status from afar as I charge in, but you can also just run Corrosive Aura just as easily. The second mod I'm using here is Mender's Aura, which got a buff to allow you to hold two charges. Honestly, it's obviously just here for the heal since I'm flopping it leaves me open to a lot of attacks, and if I sit in one of these, I'm pretty much safe. Mantle of Thorns works here as well because it also gives you 35% damage reduction to melee enemies and that'll allow you to face tank pretty much anything on melee with Apocalypse. I did Gorefist here, it's straight up scary. But there's not too many options here, you really do need a very solid amount of recovery. You can run Leech Ember, but I don't think that works at Belly Flop. I just want something else here to really help out with keeping you alive. Currently all I really have is Mender's Aura and maybe Blood Warts if I can. Now, while I do say this is a meme setup, it actually works, and it can go through Apocalypse, it can do Apocalypse bosses, but obviously it's just not the most practical things. It's just hilarious and it's fun, so I'm including it. It's great. Next up on our builds is a summoner setup. Summons in this patch got a crazy amount of buffs. First off is that they scale with mod damage, so hello lab armor. The second is that they can crit and hit weak spots, which opens up a lot of possibilities for sets. You can run crit setups, you can run weakness exploit setups, who knows. I'm just going straight mod power for now. And lastly, Soul Ember can detonate summons instantly if you summon over your limit, making them great bombs if you have extra mod power. Now your weapon of choice is entirely up to you, but I really like the ricochet rifle because it hits my own summons, which will cause them to detonate. It grants an obscene amount of mod power since it bounces off every hit and just grants a ton of mod power, and it's just fun as fuck. Summons can be whatever you want them to be, different bosses in different situations might warrant different summons, though don't forget we do have a new summon, the Wasteland Good Boy which you can pick up by petting the doggo. He's a great summon, very aggressive, and you can pet him for buffs. Unfortunately, you only get one. The other key items here is the new ring, Burden of the Follower. This grants us double mod generation at the cost of 25% reduced fire rate. While normally that would be pretty awful hit to our DPS, we are going to be focusing on minion damage, so give me that mod power. 
Summons are crazy strong right now, and they can easily tackle Apocalypse content. Some bosses can be a struggle since they will basically destroy your minions in just one swing most of the time, but that does help keep the playstyle a bit more active. The only thing that annoys me with this build is that minions can be very loud and they just constantly spam like runts and barks and it gets old really fast. The third build I'm going to show is what I like to call Twisted Thunder. The Twisted Armor got a rework to grant HP regen and 30% mod and melee damage so long as you aren't taking damage. Obviously I want to use melee and mods to make the most of this set, so here's what I went with. First, Curse of the Jungle God. This got buffed to apply overload status on enemies that the tentacles hit. We'll be using overload a lot in this build. Second, any secondary non-boss gun. While you can use Eye of the Storm, I went with a coach gun and blink token. This will get me in melee range, stagger enemies on that little explosion, and proc overload all at the same time. And the melee weapon is of course going to be Voice of the Tempest. I can set up overload with this or tentacles, proc it with tentacles, you know, curse primary fire, melee pokes, or blink token. A lot of thunder, a lot of booms, a lot of fun. That's the name of the game. With all this lightning, of course we're going to be using Storm Amulet. This got a slight rework and now increases all shock damage by 15%, which will include our Cursed Primary Fire, Tentacle Swings, Melee Pokes, Bling Token, all that stuff. Then weapon mods that do shock also get 10% bonus. So yeah, it's a lot of lightning. And yes, that does stack. For your rings, I'm using Burden of the Follower again. That's mod generation is just too nice to pass up and lets me spam Tentacles and Bling Token a lot. The next ring is up to you, Spirit Stone is very nice, the Ring of Supremacy is for mad damage, and Root Circle is also a good option here now that it's 15% attack speed. You can also change this around to a Shotgun Swapper build by running Provisioner's Ring and using a Shotgun to spam mods faster. Just a thought though. This build is a fun hybrid setup that gets to utilize melee weapons unlike anything else, and the damage is pretty solid. This build is going to stand out more than most people's because it uses a lot of weapons and armors that were previously just not really used at all, and thanks to the recent buffs that just brought about everything up in line with each other, it's just exciting and I get to see all this weird stuff interact and it actually be good and decent and competitive, well, I wouldn't say competitive, that's a stupid thing to say. It's good. I'm blabbing on. It's good. And now the last set I'm going to showcase here is becoming one of my favorites. I'm going to call this Band Dots. Get it? I can't tell you how much I love the coach gun now. It got a slight buff to its range and a tighter spread and I love it and I wanted to build around it entirely. While Hunter's armor is clearly better for damage, I can't escape spare shot. And when you get those chains of like 6 procs in a row, ugh, it just feels so good, I just can't pass it up. Anyway, to help coach gun as much as I could, I went with Hive Cannon as a sidearm. Not only does it put corrosion on enemies, but because it hits twice, with the initial shot and the burst, and Bandit Armor can proc off both of those, so you're effectively doubling your clip size with this thing, which is great for clearing adds, building mod power, putting on your corrosion stacks, it's great, it just works really really well with Bandit Armor. The mod for Coach Gun is Hotshot, because more dots, more dots, and 15% more damage to Coach Gun itself. I do expect to use some of the new bonds when the DLC launches, so I'm just going to keep this in for now and swap it out with whatever I feel like. Obvious bandit armor here for that spare shot, and then the necklace I'm running is Gunslinger Charm. The fire rate really helps on the spare shot procs, and we will be reloading very often still, so the reload speed is much appreciated. Empowering loop for obvious fat damage. And the last ring here is more of a personal touch. Supremacy or Hunter's Ban is a clear choice for damage per hit, but the new Celerity Stone is hands down my favorite item. I fucking love this thing. Let me explain this. 40% increased consumable speed, which means Dragon Hearts, Blood Wards, Ammo Boxes, and Frenzy Dust is super fast. And now when you use a consumable, you get a 15 second buff that increases your reload speed by 20% and swap speed by 25%. So, when I drop a fat red cloud thanks to Frenzy Dust, I get 15% increased fire rate, 40% reload speed, and 25% swap speed. It's insane. And you can just reload and reload and keep shooting fast and just, it, with Bandit, oh, the whole thing just comes together so damn well. I fucking love it. Of course, you'll be consuming a lot of Frenzy Dust on bosses, but still, 
I just love this ring and it promotes new interactions with items that we really didn't get to use before. I mean, I'm not saying that nobody used Frenzy Dust, but now I can get buffs off using Blood Warts and Ammo Boxes and it just allows me to use more items to actually incorporate in my build better. This may not be the most optimal setup for damage, but goddamn, it's fun and it's still really effective. I'm going to be using this setup going forward a lot. Maybe swap the coach gun out for Spore Bloom depending on the boss because that slow is nasty and Spore Bloom hits like a truck. But alright, so that's kind of the new builds I have set up and ready to go before this DLC launches. I hope you try them out, think they're fun, and go enjoy the new DLC, dude. I'm super hyped. Thank you all for watching and good luck out there hunters and whatever you may be hunting.